everyone. I'm back today with a video for you. I'm super excited to be guest blogging over on the Neat and Tangled site this month. And I thought today I would share with you an art journal page with one of my most favorite stamps from them, the Hope Anchors the Soul stamp. I have to preface this video by explaining that I really had no plan in mind. I just knew that I wanted to use the stamp and create an art journal page. So you'll see how my creative process works through some kinks. I started by using some distress inks and I wanted to distress a manila tag. So I'm just smushing the ink pads right on my Ranger craft sheet and spritzing it with water. You want to have quite a bit of water so that you will be able to puddle the ink on your craft sheet. Now I'm just taking a regular manila tag and pouncing it down into the puddles, kind of looking where I want some more color. I like to be able to heat set the um, ink a little bit and this will preserve where your puddles on the tag are and you can build up layers. So I'm just heating it a little bit and I'm moving the tag around to get the drips to move around the tag. I love doing this technique. I could distress manila tags all day. I just find it really relaxing and it's really fun to see the different color combinations you can do and how um, the tags all come out differently. So once I have it heat set, I'm going to actually pounce it down into the puddle some more to add another layer. And this is how you can get a really cool dimensional look on your manila tag with just distress inks. And this is um, this step you can repeat over and over and just keep building layers and layers of distress ink. As long as you heat set it in between, you'll preserve the puddles and the splashes to, you know, stay the way that they look once they're wet. So I'm just gonna clean up my craft sheet. That's what I love about using the Ranger craft sheet anytime you're doing anything messy. It's super easy to clean up. And I'm using the small um, art journal, the Diane Reevely Delusions um, art journal and some of the Dina Wakely paints. So I'm squeezing some of um, Dina Wakely's paints out on my craft sheet. I'm using her blue lapis color or lapis, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. I'm using blackberry, turquoise, and night. And again, using that craft sheet as your palette is really convenient as well. So now I'm just trying to find a page that I have already gessoed. You actually just saw a sneak peek of another page that I'll be blogging about soon. And I'm adding some water to the blue lapis color so that it'll be more like a wash. And I'm just painting it on my page here. Again, um, I really don't have a, a plan. Um, I just thought I would play. And that's the beauty of art journaling. I'm adding more water dipping my paintbrush in my water bucket and really spreading the color. I like how these paints can go on nice and thick or you can water them down and they look like a, a beautiful wash. So this um, spread is gessoed ahead of time and dry. Um, you can see on the edges of the paper where I didn't have any gesso and that's perfectly okay. And the dark spots in the center are actually where my pages stuck together and I tore them a little bit. But again, just go with the flow. Art journaling is all about experimenting and playing. Um, I am heat setting in between my layers. Um, I'm impatient and I'm videoing, so I, I definitely use my heat tool to help speed up the process. 
Now I'm going to add a wash of the blackberry paint. Not necessarily everywhere where I put the blue, but just to layer it on top of the blue gives a really pretty translucent look. And a little bit of heat setting. I had some really fun drips going on, so I'm just moving my journal around to um, have the drips go down the page. Now I'm just trying to decide what to do next. I decided um, the white parts of my page that I left with no paint looked a little too white for me. So I'm just using my dirty paint water and um, adding some water to it. This is that Lapis blue color again but it is not watered down. So you can see the difference in the vibrancy of the color. And I'm adding this to the page to do a stenciling technique. When I'm laying down the color, I am trying to think about adding movement across the page. So definitely think about having things go off the edge and um, have it move somewhat across the page. Rules of three are always good. Now I'm going to use this stencil here. Um, this is a Julie Balzer stencil um, and I'm just taking a baby wipe and rubbing through the stencil on the wet paint. You'll notice um, my design is blurred a little bit. I do have to confess my baby wipe is a little bit too wet. It's um, a good idea to blot it on a paper towel to take some of the moisture out of it before you do this technique. But instead of, you know, getting frustrated, I just kind of kept with it and I figured um, if it all was consistently wet, then it might be a really neat technique or a texture. What's great about this technique too is your baby wipe will become um, dirty with the colors that you're wiping so you can wipe on your whiter areas as well to transfer the color. Again, I'm just laying down a repetitive pattern. You can tell this time I'm trying to be really cautious of staying within the camera. Um, unlike my last art journal class where, or my last art journal video where I got carried away into the moment of creating and didn't realize I wasn't always on camera. I'm heat setting this again because it is fairly wet with that paint and the baby wipe. And now I'm using um, this stencil here. I'll link all the supplies in the description of my YouTube video and on my blog. I don't remember them all by heart right now. But I'm using this stencil and the mini blending tool in the turquoise paint. And I'm just pouncing some of the color through different parts of the stencil. I'm not really worrying if I do it all perfectly or if I fill in all the circles all the way. Um, again, I'm just moving that turquoise color across the page. The mini blending tool is fairly new. Uh, Tim Holtz came out with this and it works really great with stenciling. The circular foam that goes on this is a lot better than the rectangle. You don't get the harsh edges. So I'm really enjoying using this tool. It's pouncing and wiping, filling in different areas. Again, have things go off the page. That uh, gives you movement. You don't want to have it all seem boxed in or framed in on your journal. It's funny when I'm doing this technique or when I'm inking stamps, if you can see my Fitbit goes from sleep mode to awake mode off and on. I really should just remember to take it off before I'm at my craft table. So I'm um, putting the tag down and I want to use this beachy picture I took last summer on Cape Cod 
and I'm just trying to decide where everything's going to go, the placement, how everything's looking. And I have decided I don't like this background. So I am going to cover it with a layer of gesso. Um, this is what I implied in the beginning. I didn't have a plan. I didn't really know exactly what I was going to do. Uh, but I'm going with the flow. And what's great about the gesso is there is a little bit of translucency to it. So you can still see some of the layers that I built up and those will add, you know, some, um, some visual to the final art journal. Some of you might be like freaking out and thinking, oh my gosh, you just spent all that time. But part of art journaling is just the creative process and getting some paint on your hands and just experimenting and trying different things and it doesn't always work out the way that you want and instead of you know ripping your pages out or giving up and being frustrated I like to just continually work with a page until I am happy with it. Gesso is a great band-aid for this type of stuff. So now that I have the whole page covered I'm gonna heat set it Gesso also acts a lot like a white paint, so if I didn't heat set it, any other colors I put on here would um, be diluted with the white paint, so I don't really want that to happen. Just making sure it's dry. And I'm really stuck on using the circle part of the stencil, so I have that out again, and here we go. I'm going to try a different technique where I am going to paint some color through the stencil. I also like the colors that I chose, so I am sticking with the same paint colors. The stenciling does look a bit messy because my paints are watered down, but I, I enjoyed this look, so I'm um, sticking to it. I'm just putting the tag over the page to kind of see how it looks. And I decided I wanted a little bit of tangerine paint on this page. So I squeezed some of that out on my craft sheet. And I love this um, Starburst stencil from Tim Holtz. You can see that it gets a lot of use by me. So I'm actually going to use a little bit of Dina's Night Paint and paint this Starburst or Sunburst. I can't remember the exact name. I apologize. But again, I will link all the supplies that I used in the description on the YouTube channel or on the YouTube video and on my blog post. I'm also using one of Dina Wakely's new paint brushes. And I have to admit, I wasn't super excited when I saw that they were long handled brushes. I've never really worked with long handled brushes um, before. But I've quickly gotten used to it, and I like how stiff the bristles are on her brushes. It does make um, painting within a stencil really nice, and it does give you some really nice brush strokes. Her night paint color is also one of my favorites. It's not quite black. It's not quite blue. While I heat set this, I'm just holding up my photo to see how it looks. I decided I wanted to add some numbers to the background. Again, it's all about adding layers and not muddying your layers. So that's why I'm heat setting in between. And you also want to be very conscious of your color wheel and what colors work well together. 
There's no rhyme or reason of which numbers I'm choosing. I'm actually more looking at the placement of them on my page. Again, heat setting. You can see a trend here in between every layer. I am zapping it with the heat gun just a little bit. And now I've decided that I am going to stamp the neat and tangled image right on my photo. So I'm using the archival ink in jet black from Ranger making sure I'm inking it up really well. This is a great ink to use um, for stamping on glossy surfaces. You do need to be careful once you place your image down, you wanna um, make sure you don't move it. It's a slippery surface. What you don't hear here, 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 is me screaming when I lifted that up and the anchor hadn't stamped. I realized I was not on an even surface underneath my craft sheet. So the beauty of clear stamps is I just realigned that image and pressed on the anchor area and was able to transfer more ink. The teeny bit of spots that didn't transfer is what a good Sharpie marker is for. I did literally scream out loud though when I saw that happened. I really like how that looks though in the blue sky and ocean. That is um, a beach on Cape Cod in Centerville, Massachusetts, right down the road from where I used to live. So now you see me adding in the orange. Um, you can see pretty much all my color choices so far work and match really well together. And now I'm just adding a little bit of pop of color and I've chosen orange to do this. The lid of the iced tea that I was drinking um, while I was creating this page. So you really can use anything in your art journal to add texture to a page. Bubble wrap, corrugated cardboard, old debit cards or gift cards. I've used the bottom of a flip-flop before. Sponges. The list goes on and on. Still quite haven't decided how or where this tag is going to go, but I spent time on it, so I wanted it to work in the page. Decided to add a little bit of gold star washi tape. I have never been a fan of gold up until this year. I'm really enjoying adding little bits of it to my projects. I'm using the Ranger Collage Glue Stick to adhere the photo to my journal. Although I'm still not sure where that tag's going to go, so I'm still thinking that out, but I thought, eh, whatever. I know where I want the photo to go, so let's glue that down. This is a great glue stick to use um, in your art journal. It holds down things really, really well. Ah, I love it. I love how the starburst looks coming off the photo and the gold stars blending into the beach sand. Such a beautiful stamp. I had to stock Neat and Tangled on Twitter to get this stamp. Every time I went, it was out of stock. I figured out the placement of the tag, so now I'm gonna do a bit of journaling. I'm using the Feud Ball Pen. This is a roller ball pen, and what's great about it is it will really work um, in wet paint and not die on you. Ranger is carrying these, so anybody that carries Ranger products will have them. Again, I'll have links in my YouTube description and on my blog. Doing a little bit of journaling of my thoughts about the ocean. If you follow my blog or 
at all, you know that I am a summer and beach girl all the way. It's definitely my happy place. Now that I have the journaling done, I'm going to add some of that glue stick on the back. going to adhere it to my page. You can see I did rip the bottom part off to make it a bit shorter. And as a last little thought, I decided to add some neat and tangled sequins, the pixie dust mixture, to my page. I thought adding some of the gold sequins would really help bring out the gold washi tape and again that golden color in the beach sand. And I really like how that turned out. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope it inspired you and just shows you that, especially in art journaling, even if it's not turning out the way that you like it to or the way that you think looks nice, um, there always is a fix and there's always something that you can do. And it's all just about experimenting and playing and just enjoying your creative time. Thank you so much and thank you to Neat and Tangled for having me as a guest designer this month. I'm really enjoying it. Have a great day and as always you can find me on shirkus.com.